call to order Tuesday, December 10th, uh, City Council meeting, work session. Sorry. I need an approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Yes. yes. Okay, we're going to start this one off with a bang. <laughs> Phil? <laughs> the Philomena Show. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think I got it. It's going to be short. Hi, everyone. I'm with the farmer's market, the light's working. Did he get it? Yeah, it's good. One more? One more? One more. I just want to make sure you could see, but I guess you can read it up here. Oh, that I can see better. Can you guys all see? Yep. Good. Okay, good. So this is about the past season farmer's market. And let's get going here. It's not going forward, Colleen. So our mission statement has not changed. It's to enable Cannon Beach residents, visitors, and businesses to purchase fresh produce and other fresh food products in season. It is primarily a grower-seller market to make available a wide variety of fresh farm products and to promote local farmers, ranchers, fishers, and artisan producers of food and perishable farm items to foster a community activity promoting social and healthful lifestyles. And this is our market dates. It's um, 1 to 5 in City Hall um, parking lot, uh, mid-Tuesdays through the end of September. And these show our visitors counts. And our visitors counts are real good this year. They're last season, 2018, we had um, 24,701. We're down this year to 23,868 because we were closed on um, September 19th because of the weather. It was not, we couldn't be out there. And we closed early on uh, July 9th, about two, two and a half hours early. So it's, it's about the same given that, that fact. So we have good attendance and we had fairly good weather except for those two days were really nasty. Um, we still have the best volunteers on the planet, and here's pictures of some of them, including um, Council um, Person Nancy and Brandon and Mayor Sam. We really appreciate all of our volunteers. I see a fair amount of you guys in the audience. Thank you from all of us, from the committee and myself. These are some of our favorite, whoops, market kids, and they're so cute. I wasn't able to show this slide last um, year, so I put it in this year so that everybody could see how adorable those kids are. And we do take uh, market, uh, market tokens are available. We proudly accept the Oregon Trail Card and WIC vouchers. You can use your SNAP card to purchase market tokens to shop with any market vendor. And thank you to the Cannon Beach Food Pantry, Barb, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> um, for matching SNAP token purchases up to $10 each available at City Hall every, every market day. These are the vendors that we have had this year. We have um, 30 vendors this past season. They are not all there on every market day, but some of them you know, kind of come in and out of the market during the season. So we've got a, a mix of vendors. Those are, our newest vendor would be the top left one, the Sasquatch Sandwich Shop. And people seem to really like his sandwiches for prepared foods. These are the community groups that have um, participated in the market this past season. We have the Cannon Beach Rural Fire Protection District, Cannon Beach Academy, the Cannon Beach Arts Association, WOW Recycling, Clatsop um, Court Appointed, Spe oh, typo there, sorry, Clatsop Court Appointed Special Advocates Group, North Coast Food Web, Cannon Beach Gallery Group, North Coast Land Conservancy, Conservancy Friends of Haystack Rock, KMUN, and the Reinhardt Clinic. The Reinhardt Clinic also is a new um, community group for us this past season. The local businesses um, support our music, um, pay part of what goes to our musicians, and they each donate, these businesses each donate at least $50, some of them more than that uh, per season to help with the cost of having musicians on hand for everyone's enjoyment. You have Cinder Diamond Fabric, et cetera, Brandon Ogilvie, 
found Cannon Beach uh, Vacation Rentals, Northwest by Northwest Gallery, Cannon Beach Hotel Lodgings, Teresa's Market, Dragonfire Gallery, Ocean Lodge, The Wine Shack, and The Beachcomber Vacation Homes. Beachcomber Vacation Homes is, a new, is new this past season, so we're grateful to have them join us as well. And these are our um, volunteers. They did 495 hours worth of volunteer work this past season. And again, that includes um, council members and our mayor. So we're really appreciative to have all of those people on board. It would be impossible to have this market without our volunteers. And our next market will start June 2020 and run through the end of September. So we'll see you then. That's it, unless anybody has any questions. <laughs> Thank you. If, Thank you. If, uh, if volunteer hours are important, we could slow down setup. <laughs> Just an idea. <laughs> okay, that was fun. Good way to start. Um, I'll go straight to item number two, which is... The vetting committee, Bruce, do you want to uh, yes, sir. catch us up? Uh, <clears throat> the vetting committee met yesterday. We were hoping to have some information from SRG, but we did not have it. Um, and we will be getting it as quickly as possible. And there was further discussion about uh, in let me see, an effort to try to uh, develop some sort of a facility that might be higher out of the uh, tsunami range being up at the um, uh, sports park area or else further up into the uh, south wind. And um, I think that that was about it. Is that, Barb, you remember? You were the chair? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I think, I don't know if there's anything beyond that. We're really waiting for the information um, on separating the police department and uh, city hall. That'll be a, a key element. So what the, the way we left it is that when I know we're gonna have the information, that I would call around and try to set up a meeting. Bruce? Yes. There were about half of the committee members there. Mm -hmm. Do you know why? Was it that they didn't have enough notice? Was it that, um, that they forgot? Yeah. Well, no, I, I know of, of, um, for sure on three, uh, Mr. Azamano was, uh, had a, has another project working uh, with some World War II issues, and so he had a meeting that he had to attend in the middle of the state. Uh, the chair, uh, Mr. Morgan, had a doctor's appointment, and uh, Robbie Dodd let us know right away that he was going to be out of the country. Gene Williams wasn't? No, yeah, Gene, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, and Les wasn't there. Yeah, and Les wasn't yeah. there. Yeah. Um, everybody had indicated they could attend, or else, I'm sorry, nobody had indicated they couldn't attend, and we tried to set it up around the, the preferred date for everyone. Uh, so I really can't explain beyond that. But I think that date was actually set when everyone was there. Yes, was. So everybody had said, yes, we could do that except Robbie. So I don't know what happened beyond that. And Robbie wasn't at the second one either, so... Well, he's been out of the country for a while. He said he would be back, I think it's like Thursday or Friday. Hopefully that's not a trend, Robin. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so, too. Yeah. Do we have any indication at this time, Lisa, when we might be getting that information? Um, no. She is. She's dealing uh, with a family issue in is uh, pretty much away from work right now. She, I know that the uh, estimator has the information, so it's, it's based on the estimator schedule, and we've not heard back when that might be. Okay, other questions? Thank you for that. We'll move on to the park code revisions. Jillian, do you wanna come up? <laughs> I threw you under the bus. 
I told the boss you're next. Um, hi, and uh, thanks for your indulgence in taking, letting us take one more pass at this before the end of the year. Um, after the last meeting, um, uh, when the committee got back together, we realized that we really feel like we were on the same page with you, and we maybe just didn't articulate it. So we've added a, a little bit of language that we hope will clarify what I think the um, the the objection was last time. And and in looking at it again, I could see uh, could see why. So the um, it, looking at L, we've added that last line that just says all other activity in the parks is governed by this ordinance. So um, our understanding was that the intent here is to allow larger events when that's appropriate, when the city deems that's appropriate at the, um, at the location that the city feels would be best, and that those larger events need to be permitted, and that they'll go through a process with the city um, related to all the particulars, identifying all the particulars of those events, whatever they may be. But for all other activity in the parks, people coming during the day, that's first come, first serve, and it'll operate as it has in the past. And would, so that all of the other um, uh, elements of the code would pertain to those activities. Um, I, I think some of the ones that uh, were pointed out at the last meeting, E, um, D, um, F, those kinds of provisions would hold for any of the daily activities in the parks, people going and, and having smaller gatherings or just using the parks on a day-to-day -day basis. But for those uh, large events, uh, they would be um, defined and located through the city permitting process. Um, and so we're hoping that by adding that last little clause at the end, all other activity in the parks is governed by this ordinance, that would really make the distinction between the day-to-day -day activity that's on a first-come, first-served basis and those larger events that will be governed by the city permitting process. So we just wanted to take one more pass at it, see if we could clarify, and if in fact we're, we are on the same page with that, then that would allow us to go forward with um, all the revisions in the code, uh, except the, the uh, discussion about horses, which is ongoing, and we'll be back in the new year with that. Hmm. Okay, I didn't, I didn't catch that from that last line. It, it wasn't there last time. So no, I, did, mean, I didn't. Oh. I didn't interpret it that way. Oh, okay. So um, I guess I would just need to understand. Uh, Jeff's not here, but if. Somebody in the future would interpret it that line by saying <laughs> this leaves it open <clears throat> for uh, permitting to allow other stuff. I, I have a suggestion, and I'm sorry I didn't think of this when we were having the mm -hmm. discussion at the committee meeting. I think the way that it's written, I kind of see it as being conflicting, unless someplace you put in the word except. So it's like we'd be on a first for first come first serve basis except for permitted events. But right now it says that it'll be first come, first serve, then it talks about um, mm -hmm. events in the, in the park. I think, we're, I think our, our hope with doing it um, <clears throat> this way is that including except for permitted events might lead to some confusion that you could have permitted events for uh, other than really large organized events that we've been talking about as those special kinds of um, occasions in the parks. Mm -hmm. Um, the hope was that by having it having that as separate use of the park facilities first come first serve basis, and then the exception to that is really an event of 50 or more persons, which needs to go through a city permitting process, and all other uh, and would be governed by that. Any other activity or all other activity, meaning all of that other day-to-day -day activity, would be governed by this ordinance. A, a semicolon after location might actually make it a little clearer. So that's all part of one, one statement. I think when you just gave your explanation, mm -hmm. it made sense because you used the word except. Okay. So could we could we say except any event of fifty or more persons, which must go through a city permitting process? That. With Wanting to link the permitting process to events of 50 or more persons, which is, I think, what prompted the whole necessity of permitting in the first place. So, so it would, 
a large event would trigger the city permitting requirement. All other events need to comply with this code. And if it is a large event, that would be subject to the city permitting process. 50 or more people. That's what would trigger the permitting and the special event. I think Colleen might have something to say. <laughs> That might even come into play here that they might have another rule or, or you know what I mean that yeah. these things can dovetail between what the planning and the parks yeah. are, are planning or our mm -hmm. planning commission and the parks are, are planning to do especially this. Right. So we, um, anyway, I just I know that that's coming up at the next planning commission meeting. Right. Mm -hmm. We have had some some conversations with the planning uh, commission folks related to events and uh, they uh, uh, in our the last iteration of that, the language in the events in the pro for the proposed events says that any events in the parks must comply with the parks code. So the citywide events policy is broader that that covers many many kinds of events, and there is a there is language in it uh, saying any event occurring in a park must comply with the parks code, and then that would bring it back to this, which would which would outline those two kinds of activities in the park, the under 50 persons or the over 50 persons. Yeah, I, um, <laughs> I understand where you're coming from, and I think that's a good way to do it. This line doesn't state it to me, because what I read when I read it is any other activity is governed by this document. So that means it's redundant <laughs> to me. Uh, it doesn't say what I was, what I'm hearing is that the city can allow for an event through a permitting process. Um, I think it would almost be better to state it in some way that large, uh, exception may be made for large events as approved by the city council. And just take it to the top and just say, okay, if it's a, an event of some degree, that the city wants to do, it would have to be approved by the city council. That takes it to a, that way you don't have any worry about some group coming in being larger than 50 and wanting to supersede whatever rules are in here. Um, We're talking about two different things. Yeah. I mean, that, that, does that mean that anybody has a, a family reunion of 50 or more people have to get approval from the city council? No, I didn't say that. It's an exception for large events planned by the city. But that will be addressed in the, the city events. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think we're I think we're we're trying to find this middle ground where we can speak primarily to the activity in the parks make a reference to, to a process that allows for larger events. And our understanding was that events larger than 50, uh, that the city really has an interest in permitting those events for a variety of reasons. Okay. So that there can be cleanup and resources and they know where they are and they can plan them well and, and make, make provision for a larger group of people in a city park. Okay, I hear that. Yeah, so I think because we're we're just trying to, to speak primarily to the use in the parks and then and then I, 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 I think there will be other uh, you know, event policy that might speak to the rest. And I'm hearing that. It's just that that line doesn't tell me that. I guess um, I'd like to see with the inclusion of the accept that was suggested earlier. And, and okay. That include that and bring it to council. So if we were, just to, so I'm understanding, if we were to say for letter L, usage of all park facilities are on a first come for a served basis, except, except, except any event of 50 or more persons, which must go through a city event permit process and must only take place with sit, at a city approved location. All other activity is governed by this ordinance. All other activity, meaning all other activity except permitted events of 50 or more persons. So it would have the except any event of 50 or more persons. Okay. Well. I see that now. I understand that. <laughs> that made sense. Okay. Um, it's a 
split sentence or split paragraph because you got two different concepts within. Yeah. It would almost be better to say all activity in this park is governed by this ordinance usage of the park facilities are on a first come first serve basis. Put those two sentences together, then have the second sentence. Except. As an exception. Except groups of 50 or more persons which must go through a city permitting process and et cetera. Because then you don't attach the third sentence into the second sentence. Splitting it, yeah, putting the two. Okay, yeah. so if we will bring all other, or all activity in the parks is governed by this ordinance except events consisting of 50 or more persons, or except events of 50 or more persons which must go through a city permit process. Yeah, that, that helps. Now, before we go any further, Bob has had his hand up. Oh, wanna, sorry. <laughs> I, I would suggest, as long as we're doing we're tweaking. Uh, this is all park facilities are on a first come first serve basis, except that any event of 50 or more persons must go through the city event permit process, period. We don't need the thing about the taking place in an improved location because that gets enforced by the, the event. The, the permit is going to say that. Right. Yeah, you know, this is part of the ruling. Also, I agree with you that all other activity in the park is governed by this ordinance. We don't need that. And that that's redundant. I, one reason for the except that is that usage of all park facilities actually is. Yeah. It is on a first come first serve basis. And anyway, except that any event and fifty or more persons. The event. Okay, that's that's clean. I like that. Um, um, Barb, did you have your hand up at one point? I did, but I think Jelaine did an excellent job. I just want to make sure that um, what the planning commission, their policy that they're working on, um, as long as it has the statement about. Okay. And we'll, we'll, we'll kind of confirm that as that event policy is going through further iterations, but that's where it was left last. I'm sure that one will go through more iterations than this one has, so. <laughs> no way. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. All right, so we'll, we'll uh, then with the pr process B, we'll just come back with that simplified statement. I think so. Okay. You think you could give that okay. simplified statement now? Bob could. <laughs> <laughs> Do we need to bring that back to the, is, okay. No, I don't mean, I just All right. so that. To, just to move forward. I heard so many different iterations of that. Have you got my email? No. Well, Use it, so we'll what? I'll wait till we have, um, I'll wait till you guys decide what it is you're going to okay. say. And we need to bring it back to a meeting anyway, That's right? As, uh, for a, as opposed to work sessions. What I had was usage of all park facilities is on a first come first serve basis, except events of 50 or more persons must go through a city event process, a city event permit process. Right. Yeah, my thought is if it comes back to that, we ought to be able to act on it. Right, I do too. So, rather yeah. than come back to sure. the work session and sure. you know, yeah. delay this out for yet another month and a half. Okay, Robin had another question. Okay. Um, have, you've probably talked about this, but wouldn't public works and director be capitalized? Mm -hmm. um, I no. believe... Uh, the editor says no. Oh, I see. <laughs> and was public works po posted by public works? No, um, public works director would not. J. Director. Mm -hmm. uh, Thanks. My so publisher says no. Public works, and it was a little D. Yeah, director, I see that. And that happens a couple times here. We'll Actually. we'll take a we'll take another editorial pass for typos and grammatical things, but Actually, yeah. Thank public you. works does not need to be capitalized. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would be. 
to do it the way it is. Public works and director do not need to be capitalized. Uh, yeah, cap and cap and director. Okay. This is from the source. Yeah. I think it does. All right. Um, thank you for your uh, patience and indulgence in hearing this again, and I think we're close. Okay, thank you. We may be there. <laughs> I think Karen just got demoted. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I think there's a lot of things happening. I think Karen got demoted, and I think that we found out. <clears throat> I think that we found out that Nancy McCarthy is not a capitalist. <laughs> I think that when I, I, she she's very kind and edits some of my work, and it all comes back with lowercase. I write the whole thing in capitals. So. Okay, we're having too much fun, so let's move to big ticket items. Good, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Here's a buzz killer. Um, this, this item was only put on because uh, it, it, in the event that you wanted to have a discussion um, between last night's presentation and then kind of the public hearing or the back and forth we're talking about for tomorrow, if there's uh, nothing to discuss, that's, we just want to make sure you had the opportunity if you wanted to before you heard from the public. I'm anxious to hear from the public, so. Hmm? I think it's good. Okay. And I thought we had a good turnout last night. We're good. Yes. Let's hope more of you come back. And a lot of discussion afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Um, and actually, I mean, I was pleased because there was several people that could not make it that actually wrote to apologize. I wanted to be there. <laughs> and uh, several of them are going to try to be here on Wednesday good. that could not make it on uh, the Monday. So you're going to do a like a, an abbreviated warm up again tomorrow night, or do you want to just jump straight into it? That's up to you. I can. It was probably like. Might be good to do an abbreviated warm up because people who haven't been. Sure. Haven't okay. Been yeah. or, or maybe we can make that call tomorrow, but we'll be ready to do it. Okay. Uh, next item is H wrap truck. Bruce. Um, yes, we the obviously the H wrap truck is. Uh, subject to some pretty harsh conditions being out on the beach almost every day, sometimes twice a day. And so <clears throat> um, we did have some uh, problems. It was driven down to Tillamook Ford to have them take a look at it, and they said, we can't let you drive it back. Uh, the front end has to totally be rebuilt, and the uh, brakes, uh, steering, all those components. And so uh, they told us the initial estimate is $7,000. And so we held off moving forward with that work. We um, have a donor that has come forward and said that and they need to do this in two pieces, but that they would um, they plan to donate $15,000 towards the purchase of a new truck. And so that puts us in a, a little bit better position. Um, I'm not sure a five-year-old truck and rebuilding it if that's necessarily the best way to go on that. Um, but we do have the opportunity to potentially buy a new truck. And uh, because of some vacancies we've held open and things in HRAP, we can make up the difference. And it'll be like maybe 19, maybe 19.5, something like that uh, would be the difference on it. And then we would um, dispose of the truck. Or um, we've also had conversations with the county about them possibly doing some of our bigger work. And so if we can get that done for less, then sell the truck, you know, in better condition than what it is now. I'm, I'm confused. What do you mean by the county doing our bigger work? Well, a, a major project like this, when I talked to some folks at the county about it to get some advice on, on what to do, they said that, you know, we, we can do that job for much less than 7000 Oh, I see. And so we've had discussions about that, and um, it's kind of opening up the discussion that if we have some major work on some of our vehicles, would the county be willing to, you know, bid on that or whatever? So um, that just creates another opportunity. What we'll kind of we could potentially take a little bit more time on this, but if we want to take advantage of buying the new truck and using the funds, we really have to make a decision very quickly so that person can make their financial plans. And once we do that, I think we have an obligation to, to follow through with it. So um, some of these other things I think we can look at uh, to try to find out the best way to uh, position the city as far as disposing of the truck that we come out as best we can. Uh, I can't tell you I have those answers right now, 
but um, there, there's a short time frame on us making this decision. Was this anticipated in the budget? Or? No. Okay, this no, but they, again, uh, I've, I've talked to Lori, and she said we will have $19,000 left over at the end of this year, so it would all come out of the HRAP budget. That we don't have to go to other sources. Now, when you say a new truck, does that mean a new used truck? No. Brand new truck? Yes. It would be um, probably an F-250. Red. Yeah. <laughs> Can we make sure it gets undercoating this time? Or? Yes. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not sure this one wasn't undercoated, but definitely um, I talked to Jason, and he said that the, they undercoat their cars, and they're not quite on the beat, quite as much, but they're lasting much longer. So that's something that um, I think we need to just make part of our general operation. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's any uh, resources for fleet purchasing. Um, That's what we're doing. Okay. We actually, um, when we buy on state contract, the prices we get are extremely low. So, um, for example, we just bought a uh, new F-250, uh, not the crew cab, doesn't have the back doors, but it has seats in the back, and for, for 32000 and that's okay. pretty good price. Okay. But that, that's the buying power of everybody in the state buying from that dealership. Okay. Well, it's the best we can do. I would say move forward on it. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Next. And that's a very generous thing. <laughs> it really is. And yeah. Yeah. And it's, I think it's kind of a family member from somebody that is a volunteer at HRAP. Yeah, it's very cool. Uh, truck bond referral schedule. Uh, up until, well, actually, even currently, we've been talking about going for a, a May referral. And you know that the schedule says that we'll be making decisions in January and February. And for that to happen, we would be continuing to work with bond council and our financial advisor, all those kind of things. And it doesn't seem like we're going to make that time frame. And so I would like to officially uh, get direction that we're not going to be going, you know, we don't plan to go in May. I don't see how, or I, I, yeah, I don't see how we could have everything done by uh, January, February. So with that, if we can say we're not going for February, any, or I'm sorry, for uh, May anymore, then we can stop that other operation. As long as we're tentatively going for May, then we continue to have those expenses to um, try to put together resolutions and uh, financial projections, that kind of thing. I would easily say we're not going for May. Right. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty clear. A question. Are there ongoing expenses while they just sit there waiting for our decision? No. No, but for us, we've not completed the resolution, for example, and um, they've not taken the steps that they need to review the program because it's probably going to be referenced in, in the ordinance, that kind of stuff. So we've only done very preliminary things. They sent us a draft of an ordinance that they normally use, that kind of thing. But there were decisions that needed to be made. Um, are, we, you know, do, are we going to select a particular model or a particular location, that kind of thing? All that stuff gets plowed into it. And those all have to be finalized sometimes in, sometime in January. You take action by the middle of February, and then that can get you on a referral in May. But if we're not going to do that, but I'm sorry, again, if you're telling us that we are shooting for that, then I would keep on working to make sure that we would have what you need to do it. I just, it doesn't seem to me that that's going to be what happens. I would like to be relieved of that uh, by making the decision. You are relieved. Thank you. I can't, Brandon, I can't tell you. Yeah, I can't tell you how relieved I am, Brandon. We're all relieved. Yes. Okay, that's, a, that's all that I need from them. Okay. Uh, is there a way we can sort of go about this? This has happened now three times, and I think we all sort of predicted this on the outset, mm -hmm. is that maybe we could wait until this process has gotten a little further along and then start worrying about scheduling out the bond referral. Yeah, because otherwise there's the pressure of hurrying to get something done that we don't have. Well, 
that's what's happened so far. Yeah, <coughs> yeah I, I agree with that. I think we can, uh, we'll know when we get to a point where we're getting comfortable with a direction. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we we still got time to get plans and stuff together. And we'll have, you know, since you have that opportunity twice a year, technically, mm -hmm. um, I think that's... We're never any more than six months away. Right. Except for maybe next year. <laughs> so you're actually the, about 10 months away, Brandon. Okay. Because that's that's when we have to be done, or we have to start to get to meet the, uh, like, the three or four months ahead. Yeah. Okay. Of course, it, the cost continues to increase, too, in terms of construction costs and yes. all of those things. But if we take that into, you know, into account, then it's better to be prepared and try to rush it. Yeah. Okay. Last item, uh, committee chair training. Colleen's been pushing a calendar. Uh, we have talked about having a uh, council chair and council or committee chairs and council training program uh, in February. Um, our city attorney is pretty open in February. She hasn't made any other commitments yet. So she thought if, if we could pick a date, then she could put that in her book and then there won't be any conflicts. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, we do have some evening meetings in February, like we have the ERB on the 20th and the planning on the 27th, and there's another meeting on the 12th, which might go into the evening, starts at 4. Um, and whether you want to tack it on. Well, the thing is, too, it's not just the council. We've got to look at um, giving plenty of notice and picking a date for all of those uh, committee chairs, because you know most of them might work, or they've got their own schedules, too. So um, if you could schedules out if you could uh, give me a date to shoot for that would be so there is something on the 12th at 4 there's, um, there's a meeting on the 12th at 4 so it's, at four, it's scheduled to go till 5.30 but thanks Carolyn would any of the But even if we were to start at six, because it's a 90 minute, uh, yeah, what 90 minutes. Ashley is, you know, and that's not a uh, meeting that would go beyond 90 minutes that much. Uh -huh. So I would just leave two dates that are, that are out, and that's like the DRB and the planning. Yeah. Um, and then our meetings too. Hmm? Well, our meetings would oh, probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. But any, I'm, I, I'm open, so uh, other than our meetings. Anybody else have any dates to throw Nothing out there? Nothing that I know of now. Mr. Mayor, if I could make a suggestion, if you can give us like two or three dates, yeah. then we can float them to the chairs, and then we'll pick the one that most of them can commit to. Are you talking about an evening meeting or yeah. afternoon? Evening, just because <laughs> we don't know who's working and who's not and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think that middle week is the best one to work with. The I 10th, 11th, or 10th? 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, or 14th. I'm just shoot, shooting here so we can give uh, Ashley some. You have your work, work session on the 11th. On the 11th, so that, that one don't work. You can stay all day if you want. Sure. Okay. So give <laughs> Ashley the 17th, 18th, and 19th, and see how she can work with those. We're looking at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Okay. Right. okay. Well, mm -hmm. Is there a holiday? Is there a holiday on 
No. Uh, that would be the 14th. President's Day. Okay. Would that be the school? For some people, it is. Yeah, that would be Friday. I think that's Friday, isn't it? The 14th? Oh, the 17th. 17th? 17th? Okay, yeah. Valentine's Day is Friday. Okay, that's right. <laughs> yeah, let's it's always not around do that. That, that weekend. President's Day is always around that weekend. So that would be a three day. For some people. Okay. That's, that's it for the agenda. Anything for the good of the order? Yes. <laughs> um, I'll, actually, I'll start. Uh, Colleen, you gave me the uh, schedule or the evaluation form thing. Right. Um, Uh, we haven't set a date for that. If you want to, we can shoot for that. In February? Or late January. Okay. I'm, I'm open for late January myself. I think the earlier we get this done before the budget process starts, the better for the staff. And you didn't want to have it on a weekend? I, yeah, it's a challenge for me. Uh, if it's a challenge for anybody else, I'm more flexible, I suspect. But Would it be all day? It could be. We've done that in the past, or we've also split it up in the past, so I don't know how anybody feels. I'm comfortable with the one day. One day? I think I'd rather have it in one day because then we're really focused on what we're doing. Okay. Do you want it? Outside of City Hall, or do you want it in City Hall? Um, I think you'd like it outside. Yeah. It's a little more private. I mean, it is a public meeting. Yes, it is. It is definitely a public meeting. Well, it's just someplace that has ADA access, like, like we've been doing it. Yeah. Ask if you have a preference, let me know. So, yeah, a place that's comfortable. <laughs> it's warm. <laughs> yeah, warm. No hard chairs. Like if we're going to sit all day, maybe these chairs down there would be good. <laughs> <clears throat> did it at Tolavana Hall last time, and those chairs were a little hard, but uh, I, we could haul these down if we needed to. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with doing it right here? I don't know. <clears throat> I've always appreciated just having that different atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I could check. If you could give me a few dates, maybe I could check, like, with um, across the way. Bring in lunch, and if we pay for lunch with that group, then the room is free, and it's close, but not, you know, but you're still away. But um, I need to call around and see what's open in different places. Mm -hmm. So if you give me kind of an idea of a few dates, then I can um, check with some places and see what's available. Is Thursday or Friday the 30th, 31st? Either of those? 
We probably don't want to do it on New Year's Eve, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably right. I would. Um, Wednesdays are better for me. Yeah, Wednesdays are better for me. I have a I have usual commitment on Thursday afternoons that I could get out of, but I'd rather not. But um, Wednesdays are fine with me. I'm okay with Wednesday. Okay. How early do we? Ooh, early. So what are the Wednesdays? Twenty-two and twenty-nine. And throw in the thirtieth if we have to. Um, I suppose as a last possible. And your preference is which? Twenty-nine. Probably probably number one would be twenty-nine. Okay. And I suppose if, if locations don't quite work, we can always meet in the chamber room or the oh, no, council room. Not in there, not for a whole day. Nope. <laughs> no way. Get running. No. <laughs> okay. She wants her oxygen. Yes, amazing, isn't it? Um, and I, again, I said this last night, uh, send me, or excuse me, send Colleen or your topic items for the agenda and we'll compile them. Oh, yes. Thank you, Sam. Okay. Anything else? Good to the order? Bruce? I'm sorry. Rob. Robin has something. Okay. At the December 3rd um, City Council meeting, I requested that the Harding accessory structure located on the Nicholson property go through the proper process as uh, dictated um, by the building code. And um, I was hoping that we could put it on um, as an item for January. To discuss for the, for the work session. yes or how, how what's the most um, appropriate like well the city has to go through it have you gone through your process yet no but I want it before I would say that we can come to a meeting I think that I want to make sure that the information that we find uh, it's it's very unusual to go through an enforcement process and then air it publicly so I want to make sure that there's no issues with us doing that uh, we can make sure you know we can let folks know what the outcome was but to actually come here and then present evidence and all that sort of thing that that I don't know it's a problem but it, I feel like it could be and so I would want to uh, make sure on that before we would uh, do a public airing of it I think for us to do an executive session, there would have to be um, pending litigation. Yeah. And I don't think we have that at this point. Uh, pending enforcement action, I don't think qualifies for that. I just don't want it to drop off the radar. I think it's really important. And so I'd like to make sure that every work session we consider that to be on the agenda at a proper time. I think if we if it initially, if we just call it an update, then we can make sure we can at least give you some information on it. Um, where my only concern is if when we get to the end, that when we're ready to take action, I don't know about it being at a public meeting where things are disclosed. So I guess I'm confused about taking action. I was hoping it would go, go through the process of going through the planning commission. I don't know if it goes to the planning commission. On an, from an enforcement standpoint. I think that it's possible that after action is taken and if there needs to be correction, it might go to the planning commission. But I don't, I, I'm not sure if the planning commission has a, uh, that kind of a regulatory authority. I'm pretty sure when that happened up in Surf Pines that it did go through that process. With which case? Uh, there was a building that was built too tall in Surf Pines, and um, that's county. That's Surf right? Pines. It's it's yeah. county, yeah, but it's a similar. Well, I just want to. I I know what you're looking for. I just want to make sure we can do it, and I just want to put out a caution. Let us. Um, I can get an email to you as far as what that process will be, so you'll know, 
as you know as we're you know going through it and it may result in it going to the the uh, planning commission it may come to you i don't know Yeah, and, and, there, and there, there's a lot of complications with this. For example, some of the things that um, are being cited as violations are not that clear in our code when you look at what the definition for something is. The other is that the property owners have let us know that they're quite upset with the allegations and they may want to take some sort of action on it too. Uh, as far as what the, the things that are being alleged. So um, as the city, we have to be very careful moving forward so with this. If it's not clear in the code, why was it approved? I'm talking about when you're with, for example, accessory structure or even, even the thing of a garage or second floor, second story. There no, those things aren't clear as we would like it to be. And what can go into, you know, what defines a unit. Um, from what I understand, it's pretty clear that, well, it's not clear, but you can go up and have a bedroom and, you know, everything, just don't have a kitchen. And, and, and it doesn't violate what we have. So, and again, I'm not the authority on this, but in the conversations I've had, those are some of the difficulties in trying to sort it out. Well, you're looking at the building as being something that might or might not be acceptable. When you do the PUD, there was 9,000 square feet that was approved for four building sites. This is a fifth. It should, it's a different um, creation within the PUD, and that's why I think it's something that needs to be really scrutinized because I don't like that this might go and be a precedence for mm -hmm. something else. Yes. Yeah, and I and, and I agree and understand that, but there's also been discussion about whether somebody's living upstairs, that kind of thing. We run into definition issues. The the um, the PUD should have been very clear on the spaces that you're talking about, the number of buildable lots, that kind of thing. So that's one issue we can look at on it. Then there are other things about the use, and I've heard probably um, about the appropriateness of allowing the structure to be there, but also about the use. And the use, we're definitely... Where it's located. It's an easement. For right. the whole PUD. It's not for one particular building. Yes. Allocated to a certain owner. Yes. And was, it, was it built by the, the person who uh, initiated the PUD in the first place, or was it built by another couple? I thought it was built by another couple. I, the Hardings didn't even own the property when, when this, um, when it was built, when it was approved, when it was approved okay. yeah. by the city there, council, yeah. right, Mike? Yeah, well, the PUD was approved by yes. the council, which defined the four lots and how many square feet in total to be built to go there. Also required uh, a uh, an HOA to be developed. Or agreement on how to be maintained the common space. It also identified, uh, I believe, 10 parking spaces for the PUD and two for the neighbor. Mm -hmm. And that's, looks to me like that's where they built a garage and a park, mm -hmm. is in that easement for parking that was approved in the PUD. So, yeah. it, it's, to me, the, the issue isn't so much building itself, but how it got there. Right. The building, how right. It got there. And it seems to me that the whole thing violates the uh, land development. Yeah. I, it's just that we have to follow, uh, you know, the law. We have to follow procedures. And so I don't want to promise that we will send something, you know, bring a whole case to you or it'll go to the planning you know, the commission. It ha it'll have to be how it, the, the normal procedure for something like this. And there are there are clearly multiple issues, um, 
there are things that probably all of us wish we would have been more clear on the PUD because, you know, things aren't that clear. And I think that it's also identified some other issues like some of the definitions that we have that, uh, you know, if I was to say, you know, an upstairs unit, uh, I think everybody would know what I'm talking about, but it, it doesn't, ne we don't necessarily have a definition of an upstairs unit. So, so is, are they, are, is the um, explan explanation that, well, you al allowed parking spaces at this spot and this garage just happens to be a parking I don't, space? I don't know. I don't know how it was permitted after, you know, uh, I mean, frankly, I've not looked at it at all, so I don't even know if it was permitted, but uh, it's, I think that it's, it's actually even more complicated than what we're talking about now. Weisman is very involved. Pardon? Yeah. I think we need to, before we get, I think we're getting into waters where we're ex exploring something that needs to go through the investigation mm -hmm. uh, process. We, it is happening, and we can make sure that it continues to happen at that level. Uh, if that winds up with either them suing us or us suing them, then it becomes a, a mm -hmm. litigation, and we need right. to stay out of that until that happens. Right. There's no real appeal process to us that I know of. This is uh, because, the, like you say, the Planning Commission is not a regulatory body. Mm -hmm. Well, they're regulatory, but I don't think they're enforcement. Not in that sense. Enforcement, yeah. Enforcement, that's what I meant. Um, but there will be a time when we can look at what went wrong um, <coughs> with that and how it happened, and we can start looking at definitions, and if we have to, look at the uh, PUD system again. Yeah. And, Robin, I'm not talking about, you know, com completely keeping you folks in the dark on it. We can investigate what happened. This is when the permit, this is who requested the permit. This is what the PUD says, that kind of thing. And we can, we can get that to you. So this is factually what occurred. But if there's to be enforcement or something going on uh, out of that, then, I, then I'm, I don't know how to say what we can bring and what we can't. But as far as factually, what occurred in that situation, what should have been allowed, what what was requested, what was built, is you know, are those things different? We can provide that. So that's kind of the factual of what happened. Um, but there's, if we were to bring it to you, I don't think that you could say, okay, we'll take action to this or do this, because we're going to be advised on on what the the process is, and if we don't follow process, we get in more trouble than. Than anything, but we'll get you the, that information as far as what occurred, Robin. We'll get to you as quickly as we can. We need to have stronger rules, and we need to be able to have a process that people can depend on. As a realtor, it's really important. Uh -huh. And we agree. And one of the things that Jeff has said, we'll never do another PUD. Yes. That there's just so many. Right now, someone could. Right. Uh, yeah, and that's part a lot of what we're talking about is how to go ahead and correct some of the problems. Okay. Because there were there were openings there. Last chance. Anything else for good or there? I do. I do. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't think I got to go. Okay. Um, first of all, you now have 15 applicants for the STR group. Okay. Um, we were a little bit li li light on that before. Uh, we will still be accepting applications until December 31st, so we may have more. We're planning on uh, bringing it to the January meeting for appointments. So um, you should have at least at least 15 when we, we get ready to do appointments. And we're anticipating their first meeting to occur in February of 2020. So that's, that, that's moving along. Um, another thing is that, that I'm requesting is that uh, when we look at Christmas week, Christmas Eve and uh, Christmas Day, staff has off. And very frequently, there's just this one day kind of lingering in the middle. And last year, we uh, gave, we, we agreed to close City Hall um, on that, that kind of a lingering day. So this happens to be December 23rd. Uh, it's always a very light day. Uh, everybody else is off doing whatever. And so um, I would like your permission to close City Hall on that day. And so the people that would be working would have that day off. But also um, people, for example, firefighters and, 
you know, uh, that, that sort, I'm not sorry, firefighter, fighters, but police officers, them, they would also be granted a, a personal day if they can't have that particular day off. So that's how we would balance things out for folks. Um, so it's, I'm just requesting the uh, closing of City Hall on the 23rd. I think it'll have a minimal impact, and, uh, but it is your call. I'm good. Mm -hmm. yep. We're fine. Okay. Staff would be great, very grateful. I have not said anything to them yet, but I'll, they'll be very grateful again this year. Thank you. That's all I have. That's everybody except Karen, right? No, Karen's got to work every day. No, actually, Trevor. 24-7. Yeah, Trevor's 24-7 too, so. And Rusty is starting to feel that way. Thank you. Okay, then, we are adjourned. Thank you.